Haymaker, that mom with a laser here, and today I have a ton of things that I need to engrave. So I figured I'd bring you on the journey with me and we could talk about some things that you definitely want to keep in mind when you're engraving. You know, of course you want to defocus and you can't forget about the LPI and you always need to account for the y slop. I hate it when I get a y slop error. Did I lose you there? Don't worry, I gotcha. Today we're going to talk some laser lingo and we're going to get laser focused and get things done. You ready? Let's go. All right, guys, so here is a bundle of boards that I have been collecting every time I go to the store and now I'm going to engrave them all today. Let's see, we've got teak wood, I've got acacia wood over here. This I've actually had for a whole year. I got it from Ikea because I thought I would be engraving bamboo a lot, but I have found that I don't like it and I'm going to engrave it today just to show you why. Here is a cheese knife set and um, it actually had the logo right here and I sanded it off just to pique my curiosity. <laughs> and so I'm going to engrave here and then I'll seal it and that's it. So let's, let's learn how we do it. Okay, so here is a board that I messed up on recently. It's really beautiful, and I was mad at myself for messing it up, but I figured I would keep it and use it for educational purposes. I'm sure you can see this notable black char right here. So why did that happen? Let me show you. So I put my board in my machine, framed the job like I normally do to make sure it's going to engrave where I want it, and push start. But within a few minutes, I could tell something was wrong. Oh no, I broke my laser. No, you didn't break your laser. If this ever happens, it just means you forgot to put your material in focus. So that's what happened to me here. So you see, I tried to go back in focus and I tried to go over it, but it was still too noticeable and pronounced. So if you ever see this happen and it looks like a big ball, it just means you forgot to focus on your material. So now let's do it the right way. Okay, so I've got my material under my laser head and now I need to go ahead and set it in focus. I'm making sure that there's nothing in the way of my autofocus pin and I'm gonna go ahead and set the autofocus. Okay, so now it's in focus and I could engrave on this just as is and it would be fine, but it's often recommended to defocus because then you'll get an even smoother engrave. So let's see, right now it's in autofocus at 9.5 millimeters. So I'm just gonna move it down just a little bit. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that should be fine. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here's that first board that I had originally messed up, right? <laughs> I forgot to focus, so I charred my board, and then I was in a panic that I was destroying it, so I ran a second pass over it without defocusing, and you can see here the intervals in between the lines are pretty pronounced and noticeable. So this is the one that I just did with you guys, and you can see it's already starting to blend a little more. With this one, I had defocused about one millimeter, and I figured, okay, I already scrapped this board anyway, so let's see what it looks like if we defocus even more. And this right here is with two millimeters. So you can see how it's definitely starting to blend and not be as noticeable the way you see here. So what's happening is when you move your laser head away from the material, that little dot size is getting a little bigger and that's what's gonna help you blend the line interval and create an even smoother engrave. So I've got a ton of boards to finish, let's get to it. All right, so I just wanted to show you this quickly. Whenever you're engraving, you always wanna keep in mind your line interval or your lines per inch. And this is basically how many lines are gonna be engraved per inch of your design on your material. So you see here, I made a little example on whiteboard because it was easier to see. Look at this one. You see how Haymaker on the top, the, um, the lines are jagged along the letters. You see that here? And then on the bottom, I lowered my line interval and it was a lot smoother. So for the top one here, I had my line interval set to one. And then on the bottom one, I lowered it to 0 0.05. Now, how you adjust this will depend on the lens you're using or the material you're working on. You just wanna make sure you're always paying attention to this. Now, I've got this job set to a center origin. So let's head over to the machine and let's see what happens if I'm not paying attention to this when I try to frame my job. All right, so I've got the machine on and I'm gonna try and talk louder so you can hear me clearly. We have already talked about the lines per inch so that we don't get those jagged edges when we're engraving. And we've talked about defocusing and moving your material further away from the nozzle so that you can blur the lines per inch. Remember, here it was pretty noticeable and then I did defocus over here and then I blurred it and it looked much better. So 
Lines per inch, defocus, check. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is that your engravable space is smaller than your cutting space. And that's because the nozzle needs enough room to catch up to the speed that you've set it to. So the faster you go, the smaller your engraving space is going to become. Think of it like getting up to speed when you're driving. If you want to go from 0 to 50, you're going to push that pedal down and the car needs to catch up to speed before it can go to that speed that you want it. The same is true for the laser nozzle. It needs to have enough space for it to come up to speed so it can do what you want it to do. When you don't account for that space, you'll get what's called an X slop or a Y slop. Let me show you. Okay, so I have my file selected here and let's pretend that I want to engrave it right here at the tippy top of this board. And I'm gonna go ahead and frame my job. Oh, it's not framing it. What happened? You see that? I've got a Y slop. And so it's telling me there's not enough space on the Y axis to do what I want it to do. Now let's pretend I want to engrave the job over here. All right, let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and frame the job again. Oh no, it's not framing it. Why? I've got an X slop. So that's telling me there's not enough space here for the nozzle to catch up to speed. So I need to push it over a little bit. So I've moved the nozzle over to make sure that I'm giving it enough space so that it can accelerate up to speed. So let's see if I got it right this time. There we go. Okay, so that's it. So if you ever see a Y slop or an X slop, it just means you need to move and reposition your nozzle because you're not giving it enough space to accelerate and do what it needs to do. So now we've covered lines per inch, defocusing, and slop errors. The last thing you wanna keep in mind is the air assist. If your laser allows you to control the air, you wanna have minimal air. You wanna have as little air as possible. So if you're using, say, a compressor, right, you wanna make sure that this is like five PSI or something like that, not a lot, and this is why. If you are cutting, right, the air is pushing everything down into the honeycomb tray and out the back. But when you're engraving, there's nowhere for that residue to go. So if you have lots of air pushing at it, you've got like dust flying all over your machine. We don't want that. Less is more in this case. So just keep that in mind and it'll help you get an even cleaner engrave. Now it's time to... up so we need to wash that off. I'm just going to rinse it with water. I might use soap if I feel the need to and then that's it. I'll let it dry. That's it. Everything is engraved and cleaned and now I just need to seal it. So um, I'm going to show you this one. Remember I was telling you I'm not a fan of bamboo anymore and now you can see why. There's inconsistencies when you engrave it. It might look the same on the top but then once you engrave, um, like you see, it's just not consistent and cohesive. So this was for mom so it's cool. She's still going to love it. And now I'm going to take some cutting board mineral oil. You can get this at Home Depot, anywhere really. And some people like the oil, some people like Butcher Block, both work, it's just a matter of preference. I'm used to using this, so that's what I'm gonna use. Then I'm just gonna take a clean cloth and a little bit, goes a, a long way actually. Um, and then I'm just gonna, you know, lightly rub it in and I'm gonna seal the whole board and I'm gonna do this to all of them. And I'll kind of like let it set overnight and then that's it, it will be ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal the rest of my boards and I will be done. Well, Maker, that's
that's it for today. Let's recap. When you move your material away from your dot size, that dot size is going to get a little bigger, which is going to allow you to blur those lines per inch on your engrave. And when you're setting up your artwork, you want to keep in mind your engravable space and the origin that you're going to set so that you don't get that pesky Y slop. And lastly, if your machine allows it, minimal air assist when you're engraving is ideal because then you don't have all that dust flying around. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a laser.